Welcome back, everybody. Bruce Porter joins us now for this week's Dollars and Cents segment. Thank you so much for coming in. Good to see you. You're going to save us money today, make us money today. Tell us how to... We're going to try to answer some questions. We're going to answer questions, so we'll keep more of our money. All right, here is today's financial question. I am divorced and working full-time with a 401k at work. I will be getting remarried this summer and will have a blended family with four children, two each. My children are my beneficiaries on my 401k. My ex-wife is listed on my life insurance and hers are designated the same way. Should we change this or just buy additional life insurance? All right, what do you say? A lot of questions there, so let's kind of break it down a little bit. It's very important to understand how important beneficiary designations are. Now, let's take the first part of his question. Mm -hmm. I have a 401k and his children are listed as the beneficiary. While he's a single person, that is fine. Mm -hmm. When he remarries this summer, regardless of the designation on the 401k documents, okay. his new spouse will be listed and be the primary beneficiary on that account. When we look at the hierarchy of the beneficiary mm -hmm. designations, when you have a 401k account, regardless of who you've listed, your spouse is automatically your primary beneficiary unless your spouse signs a document that specifically waives their right to be that beneficiary. In this type of situation, that might be what they want that. to do. Really? It's very important. We handle a lot of rollovers from companies that are either uh, did away with or they're allowing distribution of their 401k. And a lot of times we'll find that their 401k they thought was designated one way mm -hmm. is actually designated a different way according to the Department of Labor. Now, IRAs and other type accounts after you roll over, totally different, you can name that. So that leads us kind of to our next in the hierarchy of beneficiaries, mm -hmm. it leads to the next, beneficiary forms. Insurance policies uh, have primary and contingent beneficiaries, mm -hmm. and you can have multiple primary or multiple contingent beneficiaries, and that is specific. Once that is done, once you are gone, those cannot be changed Can't and they will be that. paid okay. regardless of the ownership of that policy. Mm -hmm. So for example, your trust might be the owner, mm -hmm. but you never did make the trust your beneficiary. And at death, while your trust may be the owner of that contract, it will pay the beneficiaries upon death and it will not go into your trust. So there, it, it does pay to make sure that you understand the hierarchy of how that works. Bank accounts with pay on death mm -hmm. are automatic. Uh, titled assets mm -hmm. with transfer on death are automatic. Okay. All right. Then we come down to trust documents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trust documents are fine, but we find a lot of times that trust documents are not funded and not designated properly. And they do not supersede a beneficiary designation on an insurance policy. So insurance policies are specific to whoever the named beneficiary is, again, regardless of who you think might be the owner or if you've set up a trust and you think that's gonna take care of it, there's a lot of trusts that have been set up that are not funded properly and have not been uh, specifically designated. So we gotta keep that in mind. Okay. And then a will at the bottom. And a will uh, doesn't supersede anything. You can have a will, mm -hmm. but if you have named beneficiaries and a spouse, uh, mm -hmm. then they're going to get the 401k and the insurance policies are going to go to whoever specific beneficiaries Regardless are. of what the will says? That's right. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Legal aspects of proper designations are very important. So it brings up the point, whether you need to buy life insurance or not, I would say this person needs to sit down and develop a game plan based on their current situation and then visit how their designations are set up right now and then determine what they need to do. The ex-spouse might need to remain uh, named as a mm -hmm. primary beneficiary due to child support right. or something like that. So it really depends on the age of the children, things like that. But that's where you seek good advice and you try to sit down and sort it all out and put your ducks in a row.